Hello, everyone. I'm Adam Bradford with D&D Beyond. Thank you for joining me for another and beyond development update and community Q&A session. I am very excited to be here today. We've got some updates to share. We've got some data to share, and we've got questions as always. So the lineup for today, latest updates. We're going to talk about Eberron races update. So this Eberron book, I don't know if you've heard of it, but it released this week. It is, um, you know, if it's any indicator is how it's selling, it is a very popular setting. And so we're going to uh, talk about how races uh, are distributed for Eberron races through Wayfinder's Guide up until the release of this. And then I'm sure at some point now that the hardcover book is out, we will look at this again in the future and uh, you know be able to look back at this benchmark as well. Uh, upcoming and then ask me anything. I've got pop talk on here, but that is a total uh, error and mistake and an oversight. Uh, I don't think we're going to do that today. We're going to instead favor just jumping into questions as quickly as we can for me to answer as many as I possibly can because uh, next week, for instance, am I doing that right? Let's see. Yeah, next week I will not be with you. And then unfortunately, the following week after that, I will not be with you for a dev update. So next week, uh, U.S. Thanksgiving, and then the week after that, I'm going to be traveling. Uh, and so I just will not be able to get in front of a camera for a stream uh, because I think I'll be like on a train or something at that point in time. Uh, but I will be headed towards PAX Unplugged. Uh, after that travel on the 6th, but uh, no development update for the next couple of weeks. But then we will come back that week after for sure. And I think we'll end up having a couple more development updates before the end of the year, uh, because I think that the 19th would be the last one, because basically that's when Star Wars comes out and then you won't see me again in these offices until the new year. All right, so we got all of that shopkeeping out of the way. Let's talk about latest updates. So Eberron Rising from the Last War is available now. An Artificer is there, Warforged are there, Dragon Marks, Patrons. Uh, all of this has been released. Uh, very, very exciting uh, coming uh, through for Eberron. The mobile reader app has not yet been updated with the book. You can access it completely from the website as always uh, from the release date. But we, with this book in particular and the way that uh, Wayfinder's Guide to Eberron interacts with it and uh, just all of the updates that were needed here, there just wasn't a way that we could coincide the reader app being updated uh, as quickly and uh, closely as we wanted it to be, but it is incoming, uh, you know, potentially tomorrow, if not tomorrow, it would be uh, super early next week is, is what we're targeting for that. Uh, so you'll be able to download it and read it in the reader mobile app. Uh, but, uh, but again, you can access from the website. I want to jump in right now to uh, some demonstration of, uh, let's see, I'm going to create a character actually, because I don't know if I have an artificer yet. But we're going to see, I always have to randomize here. Like I can't ever leave it as just Bad Eyes character. So we're going to look at Banwin. All right. And we're going to say that uh, Banwin definitely is a bugbear artificer because that is very optimal for this class. So Artificer, that's what we're going to choose. And uh, we're going to say that Banwin is uh, pretty skilled at his craft here. And we're going to choose, uh, obviously, Brewer's Supplies. Um, if you're not choosing Brewer's Supplies, you're doing it wrong. Um, let's see, what else would he be good at? Medicine, because of all the Brewer's Supplies. <laughs> <laughs> and then perception for Banwin here. Uh, Artificer infusion. So we've got all kinds of stuff going on here. So this is actually the part that I want to show everyone just to make sure that we have 
uh, you know, that you're, you're able to, to see what you can do with these infusions because it is pretty cool what happens. So let's say uh, replicate magic item, we'll do that. Um, let's do an alchemy jug, but then let's also do replicate magic item and then do an arm blade because, you know, man one's going to cut off his hand and uh, put a blade on it instead, as bugbears do. Um, let's say resistant armor, and then, uh, man, this is a lot of infusions at level 10. It's a very powerful class, I tell you what. All right, so uh, actually, let's see. Yeah, we're going to go with that. Re no, repulsion shield, I like it. All right, so we're going to say that Banwin is an R battlesmith, because I like that. And then ability score improvement. Probably is going to need some intelligence. <laughs> so we're going to go with that. More intelligence. All right. So, man, I remember, uh, you know, doing this kind of thing for a 10th level character. Used to take, uh, used to take hours. All right. So point by, um, we'll go with that. I like constitution, dexterity, strength, wisdom, very charismatic band one is. All right, so we're going to go, oh, we need a background. Banwin is probably a guild artisan. Makes sense to me. Got to choose some... Uh, Let's see, cobblers, what, what it cooks utensils. So he cooks and makes some things to drink. And then he knows giant. All right, here we go. Go to our character sheet here. We've got Banwin. You'll notice that we have, uh, I'm kind of zoomed in here, but we now have an artificer uh, backdrop. So I think that was missing maybe initially, but that is in there now. We're going to get an artificer uh, frame color as well before too much longer. Uh, but yeah, let's, uh, we're going to put a nice little Eberron frame on Banwin here too. So animated Miter's touch on Banwin. All right. So now the part I really wanted to show you, and I've been playing around with frames, is in the extra section. No, nope. why did I say that? Um, in the features and traits section, um, we're going to have artificer infusions that it talks about those here. And you can see all of the explanation of what's going on with uh, you know the, the infusions themselves. But when you go into uh let's see where are we where are my there we go equipment this is the real part that's been added and this is the part that you might be missing and the part that i wanted to highlight for you today we now have infusions here so you can also see that by just simply uh, going down or you can filter with the label here but boots of the winding path i can actually come over here and infuse a pair of boots, and now I have those boots, all right? And so I can take those boots, customize those, or whatever else that I would need to do. So going into my inventory, oh, let's uh, start with some gold here where I can get this um, randomized, add that starting gold. I've got what I need there and manage equipment. So if I'm looking at my inventory, something is not working correctly here. Oh, I've got to save this. That's what I've got to do. The zooming in is messing me up because <laughs> I don't see all my buttons. Uh, let's see. Let's add that. All right, here we go. Um, and so I'm going to be able to see with my infusions, again, the boots here, and choose that. We can change that if we needed to, but we create our infusion, 
and you'll actually see that the boots show up here and they're available for you to equip. Radiant weapon, same thing. You can choose which type of weapon you're going to do here. We're gonna do a radiant club because that makes a lot of sense. So then again, the club shows up here. <laughs> uh, replicate magic item, alchemy jug. So this one's pretty easy because if you just create the infusion, it's going to show up. But then with arm blade, Again, sorry for the scrolling, just I'm zoomed in. Uh, arm blade, we're gonna say that Banwin's gonna put a battle ax on his arm. And so you get to choose which type at that point in time. So resistant armor, this uh, will be the last one I go through here, but you'll see that the type of armor that you're choosing. So let's say we're gonna do hide armor and then we're going to do uh, resistant to necrotic damage. And then we can create that infusion and it will show up here as well. So again, in the equipment section, so features and traits, you can read about the infusions, but in the equipment section, you can actually view and manipulate your infusions for your artificer character. And now that I have this character, I cannot really live without at least changing my portrait because I don't like showing up in my character section without a portrait. Um, so check out the infusions that the team has put in place here. Very, very handy for artificer characters. All right, back here with the Encounter Builder. I'm going back to the website here. So with the Encounter Builder, this is very exciting uh, information here. We now are persisting what you, uh, what you have as a preset for managing the character. So this is something that people have been asking for and we got that in place this week as well. So if I am managing my characters here, I can choose a uh, different, uh, ooh, Beyond Heroes, look at those folks. Um, so I can choose those, we'll hide this one. That's needed for the Twitch extension if you're curious. But um, we've got these characters and we can create an encounter here. Ooh, Aracocra, we'll make three of those. And we have some scary simulacrum, simulacrum, simulacrums, simulacrums, simulacrum, I think is how you say it. Um, I read words. I haven't had to say that word before. All right, so uh, then we have our encounter here. We're going to save it. It's going to take us to the encounter, I think. Come on, you got this. Maybe not. Currently in beta is what it says right here. Um, so let's let's go view our encounters and let's see if uh, if that one showed up there. All right, untitled encounter, here it is. So we've got this, but then if I want to go and create another new encounter, it actually remembered what was there. So that is going to persist at this point in time. And all the people rejoiced and shouted from the rooftops. So it's persisting now. We are working on the D&D Player mobile app. We are working, so this has moved from upcoming to actual in progress now. We're working on encounter tracking. And then this is exciting. We had the kickoff this week for digital dice rolling. We have a team that is starting to look at digital dice rolling. We're early days here, folks, but it is very exciting that we are starting that effort. Uh, I am just, uh, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to show, now this is probably going to mess up a good bit because um, I am very much so zoomed in and this is not optimized. And actually I might like zoom out just a little bit where maybe it looks a little bit better. but. I am currently testing a little bit some dice rolling for uh, when we're streaming. And so if I make an athletics check with Briv, it rolls that die there and it tells me what I rolled. So uh, very, very exciting. I just love the physics of that. When I'm rolling my huge amount of damage, like it's just happening on the screen. So all of that is something Again, early days here, 
No idea exactly when we're going to have that out, but we are starting to work on it. Let's look at Eberron races and then even some classes based on those races. So the Eberron races at this point in time, the Warforged remains supreme that out of our entire data set for these four races, 52% are the Warforged. Changeling is next, Kalishtar and uh, that says Swifter. <laughs> That's a funny typo. That's actually supposed to be Shifters, uh, not Swifters. Um, I think a Swifter is a, a type of a cleaning appliance, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I think, I don't know. My wife graciously does that, that part of our uh, duties at home. Uh, so, uh, but yes, the Shifters <laughs> come in at 10% uh, on this. I wonder if that persists all the way through here. So changeling class distribution. You can see there are more changeling rogues than any other class. Followed closely by warlock artificer is pretty high here as well. Bard, all of that makes a lot of sense. You can see for the Kalishtar, it is cleric. I think that seems pretty appropriate too. Again, a lot of this is going to be based on ability score increases because there are uh, a lot of players that want to maximize the output with that, and uh, there is nothing wrong with that. But this is what we see with classes in Kalishtar. And then Warforged, whole lot of Warforged artificers, uh, which again is not very surprising to me because that is just a really cool concept. But a lot of Warforged fighters as well, and everything else is just kind of bucketed to get together. And it does say shifter and not swifter um, or swiffer or whatever it said. Uh, shifters, uh, barbarians, or Drew is even a little more popular for shifters than it is typically for other races. So let's talk about upcoming and then we're going to get into questions. So upcoming, we have not forgotten about the hand grenade of an unearthed arcana that was a uh, thrown our way a couple of weeks ago with the class feature variants. That is something that we are taking very seriously and we know that the community wants to see these things, uh, but we are having to make sure that we don't, uh, you know, cut off our nose to spot our face and, and, you know, paint ourselves into a corner that we don't need to be in at some point when all of these rules become official. So we are working on uh, you know, all of the, the different bits of planning for this, and then we'll execute and we will keep everyone up to date. Uh, you know, someone asked me if I could give some kind of general timeline and ultimately uh, what, uh, you know, I, I've told everyone that I don't give dates of any sort. And so someone said, uh, the question that I will answer here today that I, I think I saw on Twitter was, you know, is it going to be available in the next two weeks? Because if it's not, that's going to impact how I plan for my campaign. And so the thing that I will answer about the question is I highly doubt that it will be available in the next couple of weeks. Uh, I know that's not uh, news that anybody wants to hear, but there's just a lot going on with this playtest content and we have to do this in the right way or we're going to get ourselves in trouble. So we are working on it. It is a huge priority for us. We will provide more information when we have it on that front. Another uh, team is working on something that we are just simply calling easy button book release. So we just went through a massive nightmare scenario where we had two books released on the same day, Eberron Rising from Last War, Dungeons and Dragons versus Rick and Morty. And this was not a necessarily fun experience for us. And the amount of time it takes for us to take the raw files from Wizards of the Coast and digitize those and provide all the value that we provide through the hyperlinking and cross-texting and you know all of the things that we do inside d d Beyond. We did an assessment a couple of months ago and discovered that for this year, we are spending half, almost half of our time development time, keeping up with what is going on with book releases. So that is going to count, you know, content entry, the digitizing itself, the uh, getting it ready to sell, 
uh, getting it packaged for mobile, all those uh, tasks. It's just this huge grouping of tasks, but it also is going to include us reacting to new rules that are put out in the books, i.e. things like group patrons, for instance, you know, which, you know, right now we're not handling in a very big way anyway. Like that's, you know, it's, it's kind of note-based at this point. And so all kinds of new rules are coming all the time from the game. And we're uh, seeing that our process, is, uh, it, it's making us kind of struggle to keep up and it's spending too much of our time doing book maintenance and rules maintenance where we want to be developing some of our new features that we know will be really, really helpful for the community. And so we're taking some time right now, especially, you know, before, uh, you know, kind of as we're going into the end of the year and the holidays here to hopefully make some big changes to our process there, i.e. automate the process a whole lot more where we, you know, it won't necessarily end up being the easy button, uh, a single button, but that's the concept behind it is it will be very easy for us to do certain parts of that in an automated way. That is going to free up more and more development time to work on some of the other really exciting things that we have coming in 2020. So that is something that one of the teams is working on as well. And then campaign encounter integration. So this is something that folks have been asking for. This is an example of low hanging fruit that we are trying to get to. Uh, I don't necessarily have a timeline on this, but this is something that uh, we're already starting to get some traction with. So, um, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if we saw some of this start to appear before the end of the year. Um, but again, don't hold, a, hold us to that. But this is just another example of some lower hanging quality of life, lower hanging fruit quality of life changes that we're trying to put in place that hopefully uh, will help folks. But this would be, you're within a campaign, you can see all the encounters associated with that campaign. You can create an encounter from the campaign page, just getting all that to flow a lot better. That's something that we're also working on. We will be at PAX Unplugged on the 6th, which is a Friday uh, there in Philadelphia. I'm really looking forward to that. If you see me, please say hello. I love uh, meeting new people and uh, saying hello to old friends. So uh, so definitely grab me if you see me at the convention. Uh, we will also, uh, I know that Lauren Urban, our community manager, is on a panel or two. So uh, check those out. Uh, and again, if you want to just go buy me some chicken wings or something, by all means, grab me and say, hey, there's chicken wings this way. Let's go. And uh, I will probably go with you, whoever you are. All right, uh, and then holiday break, I do wanna talk about this. Our teams work very, very hard. We've had a big year. It's been so exciting. I adore working with these folks. I've never worked in a better environment. They are incredible, and they have worked very hard this year to do some mighty things. And so as we start to get into December, especially around the middle of December, things start to wind down and shut down around our offices. And so pretty much from mid-December through the first of the year, we are not going to be working. We all value this time to recharge batteries, spend time with our families and friends, and, uh, you know, just, uh, again, unwind. It's very good for our teams to, and our employees to be able to do this, uh, you know, to just mentally recharge and, you know, be able to come back in the new year really ready to hit the ground running. And so it's uh, it's one of my favorite times of the year that I get to just uh, exist at home without needing to check Slack, without needing to, uh, you know, just uh, answer questions or, or get on a meeting. And so we value this time and we are going to be having that time uh, just where you understand as we kind of get to the end of the year, things are going to be pretty quiet around here. And then we will hit the ground running in January, uh, rip raring to go.